Welcome to our unit on probability. We are going to start off uh, this unit in probability with just uh, doing simulations. We're not really going to get into the the thick of the kind of the theoretical, the really mathy aspect of probability. We'll get into that uh, later this chapter. So all three of my children, personally, all three of my children are girls. And so people will often ask me, oh man, what are the odds? You got three girls. And sometimes you know, I sit there and wonder, that's a good question. Uh, you know, what are the odds? What's the probability that I would have three girls out of three children? And it really should be the same probability as having three boys out of three children as well, right? Uh, and there's some assumptions that we make in that case. So when you really ask, what is probability? What is the definition of probability? And so this is the definition we're going to use all chapter long. It's the proportion or the percentage of times an outcome would occur in a very long series of repetitions. Now, it's that last part that we don't really associate with probability. We just kind of think of probability as the proportion of percentage of times an outcome would occur, right? But would occur out of how many times? Well, theoretically, it's out of a very long series of repetitions. Now, within that definition, we talk about in a very long series of repetitions. So, again, me personally, I had three girls out of three children, but that's one set of three children. So if I really wanted to estimate the probability, then I would need to see many, many sets of three children and then count how many girls were in each of those sets. Okay, so I can't just estimate what the probability would be just on my one occasion, because that is not a very long series of repetitions. That is one repetition. That's me. And if I only considered myself, then I would think the probability is 100%, because it happened to me, right? I think it's like inevitable that I was to have three girls out of three children. But if I want to figure out what it should be, theoretically, for any person, we need to look at this for many, many sets of three children. So we will get to the point where we will calculate the probability mathematically, uh, but if you don't know how to mathematically calculate a probability, what you can do is kind of a, a runner-up, if you will, is that you can use a simulation to estimate what that probability is. So before we get to a simulation, uh, there are some assumptions that we mentioned earlier that we're going to have to make here. Uh, and the first assumption is that each child being born is independent of the other. And what I mean by that is if I have a girl as my first child, then the outcome of the next child shouldn't be affected whether my first child was a boy or a girl. All right. And no matter what gender my first two children are, it should really have no influence on the third child. All right. So in general, we're saying uh, that the probability of boys and girls, we're going to say are a 50-50 chance. All right. Is that really the truth? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not these days. Uh, but we'll just go with the assumption that it really theoretically should be a 50-50 chance. So next we need an object that works with our assumptions so we can devise a plan on how we will use it in our simulation. So we need to come up with like a, a I would, wouldn't say every time, but oftentimes we need like a physical object uh, that we could use to do a simulation with. So I have four possibilities here for you. You could maybe use a deck of playing cards. You could use random numbers, like from a random number table, like what we used uh, last chapter. You could maybe use a coin, or you could use a variety of different uh, dice. Okay, so I'm going to talk about all four of these as possibilities. So first with the playing cards. Um, if boy and girls are really going to be 50-50 odds here, then what I could do is I could take my deck of cards and split them up by color, right? There's half of the deck is red cards, half of the deck is black cards. So I could call the red cards, I could assign that to being, to represent uh, that a girl was born. And if I got a black card, I could associate that with being, with a boy being born. Uh, does red have to go with girl? Could red go with boy? Absolutely. I just defined them this way. Now, another possibility is you could take that entire deck of 52 cards and you could just take out, let's say, one king and one queen. 
And we could say the queen represents getting a girl and the king represents having a boy. And so you don't need all 52 cards. You could take however many cards you need in this scenario. And so what we would do is we would, you know, draw a card, identify if it was a girl or a boy, a queen or a king, and then we would need to really put the cards back together, shuffle them up as best as we can, and then draw a second card, identify girl or boy, put the cards back together, shuffle them up as best as you can uh, to really make it truly kind of random, if you will, and then record the third child, whether it's a girl or a boy. Now, with the random number generator or a uh, random number table, we could generate three single digit numbers from zero to nine. Uh, repeat numbers would be okay to see because a zero doesn't mean a specific child. Uh, and so, I again, I presented two possibilities here. These aren't just the only two. But if I saw the numbers zero through four, zero, one, two, three, four, that's five numbers. And I could say that represents having a girl. And if I saw the digits five, six, seven, eight, or nine, there's five digits out of 10. So we could say that's like having a boy. Now, you could also say, well, even numbers are girls, zero, two, four, six, eight. And seeing an odd number, one, three, five, seven, nine, is like having a boy. So there's two possibilities you could do with uh, numbers, with digits. Now, a coin is probably going to be the most common thing that you would think of. You know, a coin has two sides. We're going to assume that each side of the coin has a 50-50 chance of being selected. Uh, and so, yeah, just represent, let's say, uh, having a girl represents flipping a heads. Having a boy represents flipping a tails. And we're just going to flip this coin three times. And whatever results we get out of heads and tails, that represents the three children. And then using dice. Again, this you've got a variety of ways that you could do this. Uh, so, you know, my first option over here, if I have a standard six-sided die, now if you have any of these other crazy dice, um, you might have to alter your numbers here. But on a regular six-sided die, you know, one through three I could say represents having a girl, four through six having a boy. Uh, or again, I could use even and odds like I did with my random numbers earlier. And I could say even numbers are girls, odd numbers are boys. And then I would roll this die three times and record the results. Again, I could easily ignore repeated numbers because, uh, you know, rolling an even number, it doesn't matter if I roll a two, a two, and a two because the two represents the, the idea of having a girl. It doesn't mean a specific girl. Now, what I decided to do was use more the random number digit. And so I went to random.org, which is an awesome website, and I basically defined two numbers here. I said, I'm going to let zero represent having a boy, and I'm going to let the number one represent having a girl. And so I told random.org in a certain part of the website um, that what I wanted to see was three numbers, either zeros or ones, and I wanted that to happen a hundred times. Okay, So each one of these rows here represents having three children. So this first row, zero, one, zero. So, so this set of three children is a boy, then they had a girl, then they had a boy. Here's a boy, a girl, a girl. A girl, a girl, a boy. A boy, a girl, a girl. And it does that 100 times. So one of these that I've highlighted in green, that's like me. I had three girls out of three children. So looking at this a hundred times, like right in a very long series of repetitions, you know, a hundred is, I'd say a long series of repetitions. Could I have done a thousand times? Could I have done 10,000 times and made it truly a very long series of repetitions? Sure, but it's kind of hard to squeeze in, you know, 10,000 repetitions on a screen here. So I settled for a hundred initially. Now, out of these 100 repetitions, again, 11 out of those 100 times, I saw three girls out of three children being born. So now, if we think about it, uh, 11 out of 100 times, I saw three girls out of three children. So can I say that the proportion of times an outcome would occur, having three girls out of three children, in a very long series of repetitions, and again, is 100 times a very long series of repetitions? Some people might argue, yes, it's very long. Some people, maybe not. So can I argue that the probability of having three girls out of three children is 11%? Can I say that? Can I make that conclusion? 
And again, I mentioned earlier, you know, I did a hundred repetitions, but could I have done a thousand? Could I have done 10,000? Could I have done a million repetitions? And I could have, right? So this idea of the longer the series, the repetitions, the closer we get to the actual, like the truly theoretical mathematical probability of that event. So the only thing that I could really conclude right now is this, is that the probability of having three girls out of three children is close-ish to 11%. Okay, it's not exactly 11, but it's pretty darn close to 11%. Now, this idea that the longer uh, that you do something, the more and more repetitions that you do to get closer to the actual probability, statistically is called the law of large numbers. The large numbers part comes into the, the longer um, the, the repetitions that you do to calculate that probability. So let's move on to a different example here. So a basketball player has made 82% of his shots this season. And what is the probability that he makes 10 out of 10 shots in his next game? Now, when I say shots, we're going to assume that they're all consistently the same type of shot. So we're going to do free throw shots, okay? Because otherwise, I mean, a, a three-point shot versus, a, you know, a layup, those are going to have different probabilities associated with them. So we're going to assume that each shot is independent, that if he makes a shot, that, you know, his next shot may or may not have the same chances of going in as the previous ones. Uh, and the probability that he makes any given shot, we'll say, is 82%. So based on his, um, his kind of running track record, if he's done 82% so far, let's just assume on average he makes 82% of any given shot. Okay, so th those are our two assumptions we're going into play here. So here's my plan. Is I'm going to randomly generate 10 numbers between 1 to 100 to represent 10 free throw attempts. Okay, so my 10 free throw attempts are the 10 numbers. And I'm going to let 1 through 82 represent he made the shot, right? Because I said there's an 82% chance he makes a shot. So if I see the numbers 1 through 82, it's like he made the shot. If I see the numbers 83 through 100, though, that's going to represent the 17 uh, numbers that represent the 17% of the time that he missed the shot. And I'm going to repeat this process one thousand times. So in one game, let's say he attempts 10 shots, it's like we're saying he's going to have played a thousand games. And we're going to calculate the proportion or the percentage of times that all 10 shots are made in these 1,000 games. So here's the deal. If you want to do something in a very long series of repetitions, you're probably not going to want to do this by flipping a coin a thousand times or rolling a die a thousand times um, or dealing with playing cards a thousand times. This is where computers and your calculators really make that long series of repetitions very, very quick. So I ended up using Excel this time. So I share with you the particular um, Excel formula that I use to do this. And so you can see, here's trial one is like saying game number one, and then here are his outcomes here. So in the end, what I ended up doing was if I saw a number, uh, so I said, pick a random number between one through 100. And if that number is less than 83, which represents my 82% that the shots he made, then assign the value a one. And so a one here really means he made the shot, okay? And if I don't, if this statement is false, if the random number is not less than 83, then that's going to represent the 83 through 100 numbers, which means he missed the shot, which this zero then represents a missed shot. So you can see for game number one, he made his first shot, then he missed, then he made, 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 missed, made, 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 and in total, he made eight out of 10 shots. But did he make all 10 shots in that first game? And so we would say, no, he didn't. But you will notice there are some times where, man, the fourth game, he went 10 for 10. He made all 10 shots. And in the very next game, he went 10 for 10. Oh my gosh, he's on fire. Uh, and then another game, there, game seven, he made 10 shots. Uh, game 16, we see he made 10 shots. So I did this a 1,000 times games. Okay. And then I even went even crazier on top of this. 
Um, so let me first tell you what this first number means here. So out of a thousand games, there was a 13.9% chance that out of a thousand games, he made all 10 shots, which really means in 139 out of a thousand games, he went 10 for 10. So then I said, why not? Let's repeat all 1,000 games. So in the next 1,000 games, he only went 10 for 10 in 121 out of 1,000 games. And I said, hey, repeat again. Let's do another 1,000 games. Then he was, on, he was a little on par here. He had 152 games out of 1,000 games where he made all 10 shots. And so I did this in total 10 times of 1,000 games each, a.k.a. A th or 10,000 uh, games, if you will. Now, um, normally we would have just stopped right here and said, well, we believe that the probability uh, that he goes 10 for 10 is probably around 13.9%, right? But then if I do it again, I see that it's around 12.1%. And then I did it again, and I would think that the probability is around 15.2% and 13.1 and 14.5. But if you notice, all of these numbers are pretty close to each other, right? They're maybe two to three percent apart. So they're really consistent at least, right? We're not seeing like 12, 13 percent, and then all of a sudden we see like a 40 percent. That doesn't happen because the law of large numbers statistically kind of forbids that from happening. There is this kind of mathematical statistical force at play here. And so what could I ideally do with all 10 of these numbers to really get the ideal probability for all 10,000 games would be, well, what's the average, what's the mean of all 10 of these numbers? And so I'm going to share that with you. So my conclusion was that if our 82% free throw shooter attempts 10 free throws many, many times, how many times is many, many times? I just did it 10,000 times. 10,000 games of 10 shots each. The probability that he makes all 10 shots, it ended up being really close to around 14%. Now, again, if I were to mathematically determine what this probability would be, you know what? It's going to be really, really close to 14%. So a simulation, again, it gets us that really, really close answer, but it's not an exact answer. So to end this first video, I want you to imagine this scenario now. Imagine that 50% of people like vanilla ice cream. Me, 30% like chocolate, not me, and 20% like both ice cream flavors. Again, I don't really care for chocolate. I like more vanilla. So I want you to describe a simulation plan. I'm not saying you actually have to do the simulation plan, uh, but to describe a plan for how you would choose two people's favorite ice cream flavor. And so, again, think back. I told you of some physical objects, um, playing cards, dice. You could even use random numbers if you still wanted to. Um, or what was the other thing? Coins. So could you pick one of those four uh, simulation tools, if you will, uh, and how would you devise a plan uh, to represent picking two people's ice cream flavors based on the following percentages here. All right, so we'll talk about that the next day in class.